This preoperative patient education informational video is intended to educate patients on specific medical procedures. Patients are strongly encouraged to contact their surgeon for more information or with questions regarding the information presented in this video. Hello, I am Dr. Rabi Sher, a member of the Society for Vascular Surgery. This video will help you understand the risks and benefits of general lower extremity angiography and intervention. Peripheral vascular disease, or PVD, also called peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, is a disease of the circulatory system, usually affecting people over the age of 50. Atherosclerosis, the buildup of fatty material in the blood vessels, is the most common conditions causing PVD. Primary causes of PVD are smoking, diabetes, and obesity. A person's legs, arms, carotids, and kidneys are the most common areas where PVD manifests itself, with the legs being the most frequent place. Symptoms include leg pain on ambulation, also known as claudication, and in severe situations, pain at rest with foot ulceration or gangrene. An angiogram is an imaging study that uses a contrast material, or dye, that is injected into the arteries to show the blood vessels in an area where blockage is suspected. Considered an invasive procedure, angiography is the most accurate test to determine the amount and distribution of blockages in a person's arteries. A small tube is inserted in the femoral artery, usually from the groin area, after local anesthesia is delivered to numb the area. Contrast dye is then injected through the tube. The dye outlines the artery and allows the narrowed areas of the artery to appear clearly on an x-ray. Certain risks associated with this procedure cause it to be reserved for preoperative evaluation or for endovascular interventions. Complications are quite uncommon with an estimated risk of less than 1% but do include the following. One, injury to normal blood vessels, puncture or perforation of an artery that can cause bleeding, or reduced blood flow or complete loss of blood flow to a normal tissue. Two, injury to the inner lining of an artery without complete puncture through the wall can impair or stop blood flow in a number of ways. For example, a piece of inner lining may be ripped. This is called an intimal tear. Material can be dislodged from the artery wall and float further away to block up smaller artery, and these are known as emboli or a clot can form within the artery, and this is known as thrombus. In certain instances, surgery is required to repair an artery injury or to treat the consequences of the injury. Three, reactions to the intravenous contrast material, such as allergic reactions or kidney failure, can also occur. Angiography may, however, eliminate the need for surgery by allowing the blockages to be treated in the same setting through various techniques. If surgery remains necessary, it can be performed more accurately since catheter angiography presents a very detailed, clear, and accurate picture of the blood vessels. This is especially helpful when a surgical procedure or a percutaneous intervention is being considered. In many cases, however, vascular surgeons can open blocked or narrow blood vessels caused by peripheral arterial disease or other conditions and can often treat blood vessels without surgery by performing balloon angioplasty or atherectomy. In most cases, hospitalization and general anesthesia are not required. There is no surgical incision, just a small nick in the skin, and no stitches are needed. Often, patients may return to normal activity shortly after the procedure. During balloon angioplasty, the vascular surgeon inserts a very small balloon attached to a thin catheter into a blood vessel through a small nick in the skin. The catheter is threaded under x-ray guidance to the site of the blocked artery. The balloon is then inflated to open the artery. Sometimes a small metal scaffold called a stent is inserted to keep the blood vessel open. Other devices can also be used to remove the arterial blockage and these are called atherectomy devices. Alternatives to angiographic evaluation include CT angiography, or CTA, or magnetic resonance angiography, or MRA. These modalities are non-invasive and may provide diagnostic information in terms of location 
and severity of arterial blockages, but do not allow simultaneous therapeutic endovascular interventions. Unlike CTA or MRA, use of a catheter makes it possible to combine diagnosis and treatment in a single procedure. An example is finding an area of severe arterial narrowing followed by angioplasty and placement of a stent. Angiography and endovascular interventions are usually necessary to avoid limb loss. Although claudication or pain on ambulation only can be treated conservatively with lifestyle changes and medications, severe PVD or critical limb ischemia needs to be aggressively treated to relieve the arterial blockage. This improves the leg circulation and avoids progression to ulceration or gangrene, which can often lead to amputation. Angiography is therefore often essential for the delineation and treatment of PVD to avoid progression to limb loss. This patient education video is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.